My name is Ravi Rennie, President of the Trinidad and Tobago Goat and Sheep Society. We are here today um, in Wallafila at one of our members' farms where we are conducting the second day of our training in dairy goat husbandry practices. So feeding 90 animals within an hour and a half time and then his work is done for the day in terms of their just monitoring for the rest of the day. We use um, rice bran, coconut meal, that is, that is what we use. When you could get it? When you when could get, get it, apart from the feed itself. Right, and yeah. what, what, other, what other types of ingredients that you may have available at time? Cereal, we use cereal also, if we can get cornflakes. Straight corn, no sugar, not the sugar type. Mm -hmm. Right? And you could use the salt biscuit. But you haven't learned the percentages, I guess everybody will learn and have their own way of doing it. But what I use is good for me. There are people available here, right, who have expertise in formulating feeds and stuff. And if you tell them all the ingredients that you have available to you, they could use the ingredients that you have available and formulate a feed for you based on the ingredients that you have. We have people right in Trinidad here, all in the UV and stuff, with that kind of expertise. Eh? So it's not something that is impossible, it's something that could be done. Right, these are the basic equipment you're using in Hofstrumen, right? These, these are the two peppers. So the needles are over long, you use this to cut down on the excessive growth. And then you work it down with, with these regular cutters, right? These are the basic Hofstrumen. Most exercise I just use one of these or one of these and I'm good to go this way. Right? This is the hoof knife. They have the left hand and the, the right hand ones. Right? And this is the basic shears that they use in the hoof treatment. Um, this is the rasp. So after you cut you have four, four ears you could file long. If you happen to cut too deep, there's a so then I you could keep plugged in at the, at the side, so if you see any bleeding, you just touch. If you touch the tip with the tip or the barrel, and just do a roll and it will cut, stop the bleeding one time. Okay. Right. So look at the foot. This one, the animal is standing kind of sideways because the, the, the overgrowth. So you have to shape this down over time. You can't get all in one go, you might take it in two or two go. So one on one Embryotomy, why? You know why you call it embryotomy? Because if you have an animal that has, has died inside the mother, are using lemon cells now, the fetus, right? Um, let's say you could not take it out and you are able to do a caesarean. You can literally put your hands inside and you can cut, cut, up, cut it up in pieces and take it out. Yeah, yeah. But we, we, we don't really do a caesarean for that, but this is another way you can use it. Yeah? I wouldn't advise Ollie to try to do that one, no. <laughs> Leave that for the vet. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My name is Dr. Anne-Marie Philip Hussein. I'm a veterinary officer. I am delighted to be part of this exercise today, which involves showing farmers how to disbud, how to um, dehorn an animal, how to castrate an animal. So I think today's exercise was very successful. I mean, uh, like any other exercise, there will be little hiccups, but I think the farmers would have benefited both from myself, Mr. Hussein and Ravi, um, teaching them the various aspects of animal husbandry practices. You know when you go by the dentist and they give you an injection mm -hmm. to dent, yeah. you know, that's what we could do. just going to numb the area. Yes, you're going to numb the area. So normally I tell my students, we wait at least a minute or two, and I'll show you how to know when it's not bothering them anymore. Because it's a sort of invasive technique, you're going to burn around the horn, horn bud. So as a precaution, you'll give it a shot of antibiotic. What you want to achieve is that the animal doesn't feel any pain. Mm -hmm. And then when you use the iron, 
and you put in it around the the corn bud. Yeah. You you want to make rock it in yeah, such yeah. a way that, that it, burn it burns. Yeah, yeah, it okay. burns and it breaks. You, you take off the horn that has broken off to heat, mm -hmm. right? But around it, it must be a, you know a circular, right? Mm -hmm. You get a nice a bronze color. But it doesn't bleed. No, it doesn't bleed. Doesn't yeah, bleed. you get a nice bronze color. Right. Once you see that okay. bronze color, you know you have achieved your target. That means it will burn off the the buds, mm -hmm. the horn buds, right? You want to go right there, right there. The pocket is right there. Yeah, so just clean like this. Pull it. Pull it. Pull it. Yeah. You can see the needle. Yeah. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you see the rays. Notice the rays right there. So we wait a little while, okay? Are we going down? Okay. okay. You kind of like working at it, right? Working at it, working at it, working at it. Okay? So we have to go a little bit again, right? challenge we have is that it's a little too okay so you take off the what is spray what is spray right no we finished no, right. so i want to go down a little more now so i want you to look at that nice brown area there look at that bronze area there to the back, I need a little space. A copper ring, you know the thing. All right, all right, so, all right, so get this spray now. Yeah? All right, what you do? Get this spray. Is it? Say, yeah, that's it. You see the nice copper ring there? Yeah, yeah. Everybody can see that. All right, copper ring there. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> with the box all right and that's it okay i think the interactive nature of the sessions today would have contributed in a significant way to the farmer's understanding of the animal husbandry practices that could happen on a farm and by the response the farmers gave there in terms of their being um asking a lot of questions or comment and taking part in the session it would have helped them to appreciate better what we do as vets but also how they can help to improve their efficiency of production and to make themselves a better farmer. My name is Edric Harry from the, from the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture and this initiative is one where we are trying to assist the Trinidad and Tobago Goat and Sheep Society uh, through a, a capacity building program uh, which we started last year. Um, we have had several training sessions uh, and this one here on, 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 on this farm is just a continuation of the, the training sessions that we have had with the sheep and goat farmers. The idea is that we are trying to build their capacity to Im improve on their productivity, to improve on their, their efficiency and their management, so that at the end of the day, the farmers would be in a position to improve their incomes and their livelihoods. I'm very pleased with the, you know, the, the turnout and the, you know, the participation, the level of participation of the farmers here. And in particular, um, I, you know, I'm very pleased to see many young persons being involved in uh, the sheep and goat production. My name is Ronel King. I'm a farmer from Tobago. Um, I find the experience is real great. They give you hands-on, hands-on um, experience how to treat the animals, how to take care of it, husbandry. It was a real good experience. What opened up my eyes was how he set up his farm. He had excellent water troughs, his feeding mechanisms. He had everything up to date. So, so it's real easy to see about the animals. And I love that about the farm. It helps you to move forward on your farm, like he show you where Certain things have to be done when, you, when you're ready to worm the animals, when they don't have to be wormed, when you're ready to trim the hoofs and stuff. Yeah, it was real great.
The experience in having the training is that just how we benefited from it the first rounds, well, other people now who now come in it have the same, will have the same experience as that we had before. Get to learn stuff that we didn't know, you understand? And we get to teach them things, you know, that they might know. The ideas for the construction of the pen, that is just from like going to different places, seeing, seeing different, well, I had to call it mistakes. Seeing different things that people do, that they do wrong, you know, that, that you don't want to happen on your farm, so you, you, you come up with an idea to correct it. You know, like the automatic water, you know, like having the, the, the urinal drain at the back of the pen so your walkway always dry and clean. Things like that we get to improve on. I'm Talia Bagwandin. Um, I have a small farm in my backyard at home. Um, we have a few dairy goats. Uh, so we're into the milking, milking side of the, the industry. We started off with just a few sheep. We switched into goats and focus on to the milking goats now. My husband and I and my two kids run the farm. We have about a dozen goats right now. And this course has been extremely helpful to us because a lot of the, the details in maintaining and caring for the animals that we didn't know. Before our farm, which was about one, almost one and a half years ago we started, We've never touched a goat before. We, ha we knew nothing about the animals. And now with the TTGSS courses, we learn more about the animals, more about maintaining them, about worming them, and where we want to grow and where we want to see ourselves in some years to come. This is the uh, real introduction and uh, a jumping in the deep end. But um, I, I'm really appreciative of, of what I'm, I'm being exposed to. I'm very inexperienced. I just got about three weeks ago five animals, and and I'm really, you know, uh, ambitious in the sense of, of wanting to get to this stage of development. So I'm really appreciative of the the two hosts for allowing us to come into their property and into their um, their operation and see exactly how they get it done. We're hoping that the farmers can take away what they have learned today back to their farm so that they can go and improve their production and in the long run improve the national um, production of goat milk in Trinidad and Tobago.